All right, everybody, we're going live. Hey, everybody, I'm Tara Bachland. And with me. Hi, I'm Alberto Carbo. <laughs> this is our first herbs in Spanglish, and we're going, we're going to cover the herb Plantago SPP today. So it's an herb that's all around the world. You've probably seen it. It's por todos los lados, el Plantago. ¿Cómo se dice plantago en español? ¿Los varias uh, veces maneras de decir plantago sí. en español? Sí, muchas formas. Eh, bienvenidos a todos. Um, hay muchas formas, igual que en inglés. Uh, same as in English, there's many names. Um, and uh, los nombres muchas veces indican el uso, or they indicate the use of the herb. Um, so it's quite interesting because you you get a lot of info just from the name. Exactly. Exactamente. I'm going to get, get a picture up here so you all can see a picture on a photo de Plantago uh, because it is all over the world um, and you can recognize it. Al mejor es en tu... Uh, what is backyard? How do you say backyard? Uh, patio trasero. <laughs> oh, perfect. Uh, let's see, here's a here's a great picture. So you know what we're talking about here. Plantago. We have here in the United States and North America, it's also, there are many nicknames and herbs oftentimes have nicknames. So lo, 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 las hierbas tienen sus nombres, apellidos, son apellidos, sí? Apodos. Apolos, okay, uh, are, are nicknames, and they often indicate what their uses are. Entonces, indican lo, lo, los usos, uh, como son usados. And you can correct me, Alberto. It's been yeah. years. No, yeah, well, that's uh, it's great. Your uh, your Spanish is amazing. <laughs> so there's um, various types, and in in English. The one of the nicknames is white man's footprint because apparently the story is that as a white man came to North America, this the footsteps were indicating um, his path, something like that. Um, la historia es que cuando los hombres blancos es simplemente así, uh, viene, vinieron, vinieron, ¿cómo es? Vinieron, sí. Vinieron aquí. A veces las palabras en mi cabeza son correctas, pero cuando yo digo la palabra, el sentido es muy diferente. So sometimes the words sound funnier when they're coming out. Um, entonces, cuando el hombre uh, blanco, uh, vin, <laughs> blancos o vinieron aquí, uh, el, el plantago también en inglés uh, es llamado, um, how, do you, how would you say that, white man's footstep? Eh, paso de hombre blanco. Ah, simplemente así. So it's very simple. And uh, diciendo la historia es que uh, de los pasos del hombre blanco es cuando pasaron por uh, los Américas um, representó uh, sus pasos. Más o menos así. <laughs> And sí. so... Go ahead. No, es interesante porque... Uh, el tema de eh, los pies o mm -hmm. the feet um, es muy eh, característico de el plantago. Um, entonces, uh, so one of its names, uh, uno de sus nombres es um, white man's footsteps. Pero si miramos, if we look at the, um, uh, the Latin name, el nombre latín plantago, eh, en español, plantago o planta, claro, plant, planta, um, y the sole of the foot um, is known as the planta del pie. Mm. And there are uses for uh, putting plantain on your feet. Um, muchas veces se pone el plantago en los pies eh, como uso terapéutico. Y como la palabra, like the word is, is integrated in so many ways, es integrado en, en varias veces, como tenemos un, un, una condición, es uh, planters fasciitis, right? Debe ser similar en español, imagino. Uh, planters fasciitis, que es en una condición del, del pie. And, and so you have the same words, you have the same root words, 
planter, um, plantago, and so you can see it in so many ways. Uh, let's see, and we have pictures here from all over the world, so you can see it's literally found in all over the world. Yeah. So I, I saw on your list you had many names that it that is called in Spanish as well, not just the Latin name, correct? Uh, yeah. Um, and yeah, I was just looking up uh, plantar fasciitis because I wasn't familiar with that term in Spanish. In Espanol se dice fascitis planta, plantar. Mm. So very similar. Sí, <laughs> um, y en, eh, en español uh, hay muchos nombres para el plantago, al igual que en inglés. So same as in English, there's tons of names. Um, los más populares, or the more popular ones, are uh, plantago, or janten is a popular one, uh, or just uh, with double L at the beginning, janten, or just with one L, lanten. Mm -hmm. um, some of the more characteristic names, or los nombres más uh, re característicos, representativos, E interesantes um, and interesting ones are uh, um, uh, orejas de burro is mm. it one name. So, you know, donkey's ears, donkey's ears. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> which is a, it's, it's a funny one. <laughs> it's it's kind of cute too. You can see how here, like in this one, you could see, because sometimes there are certain varieties that get really, really big and some are just tiny. And it also depends on the, the growing stage, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but like that makes me think um, of one of its uses. Uno de los usos del plantago es uh, para infección de, orejo, de orejas. Uh, entonces, burro de oreja, eh, oreja de burro, uh, it como que trae atención a, a las orejas um, mm -hmm. or brings attention to one of its uses um, mm -hmm. eh, otro nombre interesante es eh, gitanilla um, which makes me think of gitano or gypsy and of course gypsies, gitanos are known for traveling viajeros they viajan por todos lados um, entonces, como un nombre parecido or a similar name to uh, White Man's Footsteps, but with a different type of people who also traveled over many places, maybe spreading the plant around as they walked along the path. Um, it's really interesting because even the White Man's Footprint is from what I understand, uh, more correlated to a certain type of plantago, plantain here. Mm -hmm. um, it, so, el plantago que es más, es blanco, porque tenemos otro, otra variedad que es más um, lila, rojo, rojo si sí, es ro, más rojo, uh, y, pero eso es no, no es el white man's footprint. Mm. Sí, ese creo que es el plantago eh, rugasia, o rugesi, o rugeli, eso. Mm -hmm. hmm. Y otros sí. nombres parece que tienen gran variedad en español de nombres. Sí, en español también hay eh, hierba de las siete costillas. Entonces, costilla es rib, so herb of the seven ribs. Um, mm -hmm. Y no estoy seguro, actually, de pronto puedes poner la foto otra vez, porque nunca he contado, I've never counted how many ribs are in the plantain leaf, but if there's seven, that would be, that would make sense. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, I think there are seven. I think this one has seven. Oh, Let's cool. see. ¿Cómo se dice ribs? Uh, costilla. Costillas, ah, sí, por sí. Y es interesante porque en inglés, en English, hay un nombre que se para un nombre para plantago o plantain es ribwort. Ah, uh, yeah. This one in Germany has nine, so maybe oh. they have a few more ribs in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on, on nueve. Nueve. Chévere. Mm -hmm. Y um, hierba de las siete venas. Entonces, vena is vein, so the seven veins. 
similar similar name different different word i guess mm -hmm. um e uh other interesting names um uh, oreja de liebre so again oreja is ear so and liebre is um hair um so like h a r e uh so mm -hmm. like the animal so it's interesting because again, otra vez las orejas um, indica or indicates a bit of the use, el uso de la planta. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there are, there are certain ones that look, yeah, here's ribwort, exactly. And there are some that are longer. I wonder if we have a picture here, uh, have more of a longer leaf than a wider leaf. Son más. Mm -hmm. um, es es uh, plantago lanceolata or a narrow leaf plantain. Yeah, I, think, I thought I saw a picture somewhere. I'm like, well, you keep... Voy a... Buscar? Mm -hmm. eh, el, um, la otro nombre, y uno chistoso, a funny name, <laughs> um, that, que la verdad, no encuentro sentido. I don't find any <laughs> reason to this name, but maybe there is, is a rabos de ratón. So rabos is like a uh, butt or, uh, you know, backside. And then ratón is mouse. So butt of a mouse or backside of a mouse. <laughs> don't, don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know what to think about that one, except to laugh. Uh, me hace reír, pero <laughs> aparte de eso. A lo mejor a lo, alguien que... Um, vive en la ciudad dio este nombre someone who lives in the uh, city sí. <laughs> this one looks like it has seven this is this is one of our presentations from a class at the Matthew Wood Institute of Herbalism it's a wonderful class called the Doctrine of Signatures and here we have one two three four five six well if the corners I think the edges have seven and Esta presentación es de unas clases del um, Matthew Wood Institute of Herbalism. Trabajamos juntos en el Matthew Wood Institute of Herbalism. Y, y esta presentación es una, una muy buena um, sobre esta hierba, como pueden ver. Sí, y es eh, la profe o profesora que enseña esta clase, se llama Lee Arnoldy. Y... La clase se llama Doctrine of Signatures, um, que es la doctrina de... Actually, no sé cómo decir eso en español. <ríe> Nunca lo he buscado. Pero doctrina de... Eh, ¿Asignaturas? ¿O cómo... Asignaturas, yo creo que sería la mejor palabra. Um, sí, pero nunca he buscado esa, ese término <ríe> en español. Um, Y esta clase es solamente sobre uh, cómo, cuáles son los, los símbolos en las plantas, de cómo son usados, uh, don, don, varias cosas. Es difícil, mismo en, en inglés, difícil explicar, pero uh, más o menos cuáles son los símbolos en las plantas y cómo, cómo ibas a describir. Doctrine of Signatures. Eh, pues yo diría que el Doctrine of Signatures es como eh, las observaciones que eh, demuestran alguna similitud entre las, eh, la planta o el ambiente donde crece y eh, la parte del cuerpo Eh, a la cual la planta ayuda o la enfermedad eh, o condición que ayuda a, a sanar. Eh, entonces es como la, el reflejo de la naturaleza eh, o el patrón que eh, se refleja en la planta y en la persona. That was an excellent explanation because even in English it can be super hard to explain what the doctrine of signatures is about. And it's basically the plant, where does it grow? What are its shapes, colors, and so forth that maybe look similar? They could even taste similar. There might be plants actually make sounds. And so how, how does that uh, 
you know, how is that similar to certain parts of the body or ailments that a person might be experiencing? And it often can indicate as a very old traditional way. If you've ever wondered, man, how did, how did people in the old times figure out how these herbs were used? This is uh, one of the key ways and it's pretty, pretty fascinating. Uh -huh. Estaba buscando y se dice doctrina de signaturas. Ah, en español. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, it's the same thing in, in Spanish, which we were wondering. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, interesting. Um, so there's a plenitude of names, I think, in, in various languages. Those of you who are watching this, go ahead and type in a name in the comments of a name that you know plantain by. I mean, it was interesting. You go, you can go to many places throughout the world. Entonces, si, si sabes un nombre diferente de que lo de, uh, dijo uh, Alberto o yo, um, pongan en el, el comentarios el nombre que tú sabes de, uh, es plantago o plantain. Uh, we mm -hmm. would love to hear from you and the, no, the names that you know plantain by. Were there any others that were especially intriguing or funny mm, yeah uh lengua de carnero so carnero is like a ram a uh, un, 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 uh, male sheep <laughs> um, una, una oveja eh, mach, macho mm -hmm. um, entonces lengua de carnero o lengua de oveja oveja es sheep um, y uno de los usos para el plantago también eh, tiene que ver con la lengua y la boca entonces eh, interesante que el nombre, or the name alludes, el nombre sugiere cuál es el uso de, de la planta. Mm -hmm. eh, entonces, llantén de hoja ancha es el plantago eh, mayor. Eh, el plantago lanceolata con with the thin, narrow leaves um, es eh, llantén menor o llantén lanceolado. Eh, y es interesante, uh, si, si miras el, eh, otra vez el significado latín o el nombre latín, eh, the, the Latin name for uh, plantago lanceolata or the um, narrow leaf plantain, um, lanceolata eh, es como lanza, lance. So, you know, spear shaped, more uh, elongated, más, más largo, more um, puntudo, pointy. Um, y otros nombres mm, hay tantos <laughs> eh, oh, there are so many and each one of them just like ha, seem to have its own story mm -hmm. es como, como cada nombre tiene, tiene su propia historia total eh, ah y también importante important to note, uh, un primo or a cousin of uh, plantago is uh, plantago ovata or psyllium. Um, uh, psyllium is most popularly conocido or more popularly known as uh, metamucil. Um, mm -hmm. Para cualquier persona que alguna vez ha estado constipada, for anyone who's ever been constipated, probablemente usaron metamucil at some point. Uh, mi abuela usaba mucho metamucil, <ríe> me acuerdo de eso. Entonces, eh, la planta que se hace en metamucil y es un, eh, un remedio para poder ir al baño, it, uh, it helps you to uh, go to the bathroom, es eh, plantago ovata, que también se llama ispagula o llantén de India, porque es, es de la India. Um, so, yeah, interesting. <ríe> En, entonces son las sementes, ¿no son? ¿Qué usan por las esto? Semillas, sí. Semillas, sementes es portugués. Mm -hmm. Entonces, uh, so it could be a lot of work. Es mucho trabajo de uh, escoger también en español, coger uh -huh. uh, uh, las semillas. Uh, entonces, mm -hmm. a veces es mejor uh, comprar, uh, pero siempre somos personas que... Um, support or encourage apoyamos apoyamos que uh, cogen sus propias hierbas mm -hmm. uh, without chemicals if they're you know in an area where they don't have chemicals 
Um, preferably no dog pee or anything like that, but that's not always possible. <laughs> you can always wash them a bit. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is, if, you, if you're in a pinch. <laughs> um... So we chose this first herb because it's, it's so useful. It's everywhere. It's so useful in so many ways. Um, maybe we'll add the list of, of herbs or add, add your, your names. Sorry, I meant to say names of this, this herb because there are so many and you could just go on a conversation about those. Uh, escogimos este, esta hierba porque es tan común. Puede usar es, esta hierba por tantas maneras, por tantas cosas. Entonces, uh, podemos discutir en solamente los nombres por horas, yo imagino. Mm -hmm, total. So, Sí, y eh, es súper chévere eh, o bueno si la gente contribuye en nombres, si people contribute names de su región, porque mm -hmm. las hierbas muchas veces tienen nombres diferentes en regiones diferentes. Entonces, uh, in different regions, there's different names. Entonces, so it's very important to, and, and great to find out different names uh, from different regions and uh, yeah, maybe reasons. If you know why it's called that, even better. <laughs> it, and I know it's frustrating to some people when they're like, what is the Latin name or the Latin name has changed for Plantago? There are so many names. Um, you'll say que, que frustra muchas personas porque tiene muchos nombres de Plantago también um, específicas, botánicas. Y es frustrante porque han tantos, no, tantos nombres, ¿sí? Pero es importante porque podemos discutir en español o en inglés. We can, we can talk about it in English or Spanish and we can say the name in botanical Latin and we can know exactly which herb we're talking about. Maybe a little bit different accent, but we can, we can understand. Sí, totalmente. Um, y eso es un buen, um, un buen momento para decir... Que quiero mostrarles a todos eh, una, un recurso de, donde pueden buscar eh, los nombres de plantas diferentes. A, a, a good resource to check out different names um, in Spanish and Español. Entonces, if you know the name of the plant, the botanical name of the plant, um, you can look it up on this web page and it will tell you different colloquial names for uh, that plant in Spanish, um, mm -hmm. which is great. Porque como hay tantos nombres, es importante saber si uno está hablando de la misma planta o no. <laughs> um, Dijiste que has usado ese recurso varias veces porque eres una herbalista. ¿Es, es herbalista en español? Sí, esa es una, es, 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 sí, se dice herbalista o herborista, eh, o sí, esas son las dos palabras más usadas. Eh, mm -hmm. También he escuchado herbolario. Herbolario, ¿cuál prefieres? prefieres? Eh, creo que me gusta más herborista. Ok, entonces, eres herbolista y tienes clientes que nada hablan el español y dijo que a veces no sabes el, el, o dicen que usan esta hierba, pero como plantago han tantos, tantos nombres diferentes que ese recurso es muy bueno para ti también. So you sí. say that you have clients, that you're an herbalist and you have clients who speak just Spanish or maybe they only know the word in Spanish. And so you've used this resource a number of times to make sure you're talking about the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I live in Canada, Ottawa, and um, I see people in English and Spanish. So, um, hay veces uh, necesito encontrar los nombres de plantas or find the names of plants in Spanish, uh, but making sure it's the right plant. <laughs> Entonces, eh, so acá, se llama fit, fitoterapia.net. Y esa es otra palabra or that's another word for, uh, in Spanish, it's actually used in English too, but not as, as much as herbalist or herbalism, um, but phytotherapy or phytotherapia. Entonces, phyto de, de plantas y terapia de terapia. Phyto from plants, therapy from uh, 
you know, therapy. Um, so it kind of spells it out, makes it quite, quite obvious what, uh, what it is, pero fitoterapia.net. Um, y si vas a, eh, un momento. Vas al buscador general, acá en la derecha. Puedes buscar, mmm, puedes buscar, esperen un momento, me perdí. Mm -hmm. um, You're doing a general search here. Yep, no, I think that's not what I want. Mm. Hmm. Un momento. <laughs> Maybe they change things. Yeah, okay, here we go. Uh, estaba en la página principal on the main page, and for some reason I couldn't find where to go, pero eh, once you look up a plant, se puede escribir el nombre acá, y puedes escoger, you can choose popular name, mm -hmm. or nombre científico, or the botanical name. Entonces, eh, si pones plantago, te da, por ejemplo, muchas eh, especies, ¿no son? Especies, sí, y, eh, o variedades. Entonces puedes, por ejemplo, plantago ovata y te dice el nombre en castellano. Castellano es Spanish, español, pero también te da otros nombres como catalán, que es una región de España, um, a region in Spain, eh, francés, English, Dutch y um, austriaco. Uh -huh. Do you have you tried the search in English first? So if you just put it in English, will it do the? I would imagine it would do the same thing. Si I haven't tried. Primero, then it could be a resource even for oh, for um, English speakers. Sometimes it is helpful to know it in other languages, or if you're just a word geek, like I like to know those. Yeah. Yeah, I looked up plantain and it this came up. So, um, one of the yes. names. yeah, this is a uh, plantago lanceolata, and the names are um, llantén de hoja estrecha or lanceolado. So, estrecha is narrow, or llantén menor, minor plantain. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. For, yeah, it says ribwort plantain in English. So at least it could give you, it could move you in the direction, get you going in the right direction. Very cool. Thank you. We'll okay. put those resources in the show notes. So, vamos a poner los recursos en las notas de show. So, along with many names, it has many uses. So, tantos nombres tienen usos o más. Gracias a Dios. Sí, sí, eso tiene muchos usos. Mm -hmm. So just as many uses as it has their names, and thank God there are many, many uses. You could use this, you could have just this one herb and it would take care of so many things. Like our favorite herbalists say at the Matthew Wood Institute of Herbalism, one of them is Phyllis D. Light. Um, and she has a quote that's something like, you don't have to know necessarily 25 herbs. If you know one herb and know how to use it 25 ways, you, you're, you're doing great. So this is one of those, those cases. Uh, if you have plantago and you likely do, although it's winter here, so we have to preserve it and we'll, we can talk about that at some point too. Uh, you, you have a great, what they call a plant ally mm -hmm. on your in your home so yeah the um, some of the uh cooler properties or unique properties of plantain uh, los usos como eh, específicos is that it's um it is both astringent and emulsant entonces astringente y eh, humectante and so it has two opposing um effects so it can be helpful for 
uh, wet conditions or dry conditions. Um, puede ser útil para condiciones eh, secas o eh, húmedas. Um, entonces es muy buena para la digestión, for digestion, um, porque siempre el, el sistema digestivo está tratando de equilibrar los, eh, la humedad. Entonces puede ser eh, muy bueno para lesiones eh, y heridas o lesions, injuries en el sistema digestivo, en el digestive tract. And the body in general is always trying to balance itself out. So it, it's, um, it's, I think that's probably what makes it such a uh, safe herb in a lot of ways. Es, 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 uh, no, no tiene mucho riesgo en usar esa hierba. Mm -hmm. es, 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 tiene mucho equilibrio en sí mismo. Mm -hmm. Sí, y ese es un muy buen punto. That's a great point. Que, eh, it's very safe. Es muy eh, segura de usar. Eh, los niños, es muy buena para los niños y muy, se puede usar para los niños muy, eh, con mucha confianza de que no, de que pueden tolerarlo. Like you can use it with kids knowing that they're going to tolerate it. It's not by any means adverse in any way. Um, y es, es muy, um, y, y es una planta que a los niños también les encanta. Eh, por ejemplo, eh, mi hijo es una de las primeras plantas que aprendió eh, y kids, eh, los niños, les encanta aprender sobre el plantago porque eh, es muy útil para picaduras. Eh, so it's good for bites. Entonces, de arañas, eh, avispas, abejas, eh, Insectos, eh, y, all, yeah. kinds of insect, all kinds of insect yeah. bites. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All sorts of insect bites. Um, incluso eh, para animales eh, venenosos. Hay historias de, de gente que ha usado plantago or people that have used plantain in, when they've been bitten by a venomous animal um, por un animal venenoso y ayuda a sacar el, el veneno o astillas o splinters eh, la saca ese es eh, sí pero para los niños cuando les cuentas a un niño if you tell a kid hey you just got bit by a or stung by a wasp like put some plantain on it they love it they 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 think it's amazing um, a, el verano pasado estaba con mis cuñados y eh, les mostré, I showed them uh, my in-laws, I showed them my uh, plantain. Y después yo me fui, I left, y a los cinco minutos, five minutes later, uh, my uh, sister-in-law, mi cuñada, la picó una avispa, a, a wasp stung her. Um, and ella no se acordaba de qué planta era el plantago, se le olvidó. <laughs> Pero... In five minutes, she forgot. <laughs> <laughs> pero su hijo que tiene cinco años se acordó entonces dijo mamá es esta y, y la pusieron eh, encima y hay, hay varias formas puedes morderla ah, 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 varias veces o puedes machacarla eh, eh, like uh, muddle it a bit y ponerla en el eh, en la picadura y eh, eh, el dolor se fue y, y entonces ella y su hijo, my, my uh, sister-in-law and her son, will forever remember plantain. <laughs> con esas historias, las historias cuando escuchan pueden recordar, pero cuando tienen la experiencia, con certeza, con certeza, certeza. Uh -huh. en, en español también, uh, vas a recordar. So your, your uh, sister-in-law, her five-year-old son remembered the story just five minutes before. He's like, mom, and then grabs a plant. Did he chew it or he, he just kind of... Yeah, then, he chewed it. And then yeah. so he can help his mom too. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and um, yeah, so any bites, it's, it's great for that. Spider bites, all sorts of bites. Um, Creo que, I think you had a story about a spider bite. Yes, thankfully it wasn't me that was bitten. Gracias a Dios, que si no era um, yo. Eh, la historia es de mi, mi marido es, o esposo en, en español. Ambos. Ambos, ok. Uh, mi esposo, John, um, tiene una... Eh, ¿Cómo es el bite? 
eh, picadura. Picadura de no solamente una araña, no just any spider, pero una araña reclusa, uh, mm. reclusa spider, que es uno de los peores, es one of the worst, right? And so uh, he put plantain on regularly, and I think it was like winter maybe at that point. So we had the tincture. Um, era en, invierno en esa época, entonces pu, uh, puso la tintura de plantain eh, y que, que, uh, algo más, mis notas. Uh, he put on a few other things, but I had to look up the words in Spanish. <laughs> This is a good lesson for me. Um, he also would rotate. Uh, he would put bet bentonite clay, so he would put some add some water to bentonite clay um, because that also t helps to draw out poisons. So plantain and um, bentonite were doing their, their work, right? Entonces usó también, también bentonite, uh, bentonite clay es arcilla de bentonita. Mm -hmm. um, y puso uh, un poquito de agua con la bentonita o oh, arcilla y cambiaba plantain Uh, Arcia, plantain, Arcia, y que más, um, colloidal silver, he also used um, plata colloidal, hmm. uh, that, it, that is, well, plantain also is antibacterial, antimicrobial, um, all these things, these agents were helping to draw out and also to prevent or uh, take care of some infection, you'll say that safely. Entonces, la plata coloidal también uh, ayuda con la bacteria um, que puede estar en la... ¿Cómo de, es? ¿Picadilla? Uh, picadura. <laughs> picadura. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, the, I imagine something of a circus. <laughs> Picadillis. <laughs> picadura. <laughs> Why do I have a, That one's very... It's a very... I have to engrave that one. And so he used these three things, rotating them, and um, eventually it uh, went away, which um, mm. las picaduras, there we go, de araña reclusa, can be really bad. These The, the reclus sp spider bites, uh, they can actually eat away flesh. Um, how would you say that? They could eh, se, se comen la piel o, o, o eh, eh, desgastan la piel. Desgastan la piel. Entonces, con los tres, estas tres cosas, plantain, um, uh, bentonite clay, arcilla de bentonita, colloidal silver, plata coloidal, yo creo que era dos veces que uh, tuvo picadura de araña reclusa y salvó. No podemos decir curar, pero uh, um, ayudó bastante. Wow, sí, qué chévere. Y es importante decir, es importante decir que si te pica algún animal venenoso, go to emergency. <ríe> Ve right. a, a la emergencia eh, si te pica algún animal venenoso, pero on the way, en camino al hospital, grab some plantain, <ríe> ponle plantago. <ríe> Exactly. One of our favorite teachers at the Institute, Matthew Wood Institute of Herbalism, uh, un, una de, de nuestras maestras favoritas del um, the Matthew Wood Institute of Herbalism se llama Lise Wolf. Y tiene una historia, she has a story about a friend who got bitten by a bunch of wasps. Um, si tiene una, una amiga, si um, fue picada por varias avispas. Es, uh -huh. ¿Es cierto? Ok, bueno. Y, <ríe> y en el camino al hospital uh, uh, cogieron bastante, o oh, antes de ir al hospital, cogieron bastante um, plantago y en el camino puso el plantago por todo el cuerpo cuando, uh, en las picaduras. Y cuando llegaron, so when they got to the hospital, so on their way, right before they got into the vehicle, They grabbed a bunch of plantain, you know, mashed it up. They might have bit it and stuff and put it on her and on the way to the hospital. And her friend said when they got to the hospital, she's like, yeah, I don't need to go into the hospital. So that was, it was her friend's choice, um, but quite an amazing story. Entonces, cuando llegaron al hospital, su amiga dijo, ya yeah, está todo bien. Yo no necesito ir al hospital más. Vamos um, a casa. 
Ya, yeah, wow, that's amazing. Y um, sí, saca todo. Si, si miras la planta, if you look at the plant, um, tiene raíces como muy, eh, que parecen muy eh, eh, panditas o que no van al fondo, pero de alguna manera la planta puede sacar eso. De alguna manera la planta tiene una habilidad or has an ability to pull out. Um, y esta planta la vas a ver, you're going to see this plant por todos lados. So like, once you see it, it's everywhere. <laughs> um, and it grows out of, you know, the crack of the sidewalk or, you know, where it's pure concrete, you'll see plantain growing in the tiniest crack. Vas a ver, así estés en, en, en la ciudad rodeado de concreto, vas a ver que sale por las grietas más chiquitas. Y... Um, eso muestra... Ajá. eso muestra que es, eh, tiene esa habilidad para sacar, 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 sacar eh, y saca todo. Eh, another story is, uh, it's, as I mentioned, good for ear congestion and the ear canals um, and for pulling out, of course. Entonces, uh, my son had a, a cold, tenía gripa, eh, mi hijo, y parece... De repente, uh, I, I realized que, um, that he might have an ear infection, una infección de, del oído, porque le hablaba, le hablaba, le hablaba y no me escuchaba. <laughs> he couldn't hear me. I was just speaking normally and I was like, Are you, what's going on? I think you're going deaf. Um, and uh, sure enough, uh, le puse... Tengo un eh, aceite de plantago, que es literalmente hojas de plantago, so uh, leaves, uh, plantain leaves, um, in olive oil. Eh, lo deja reposar como por seis semanas, eh, o un mes por lo menos. You just let it sit for six weeks, one month at least, and then you strain, se cuela, and eh, un poco de aceite con el dedo, así, en las dos orejas, y... Y ya, y a la, a la hora, an hour later after putting it on, on his ear, on his ears, uh, from one of the ears, there was a, a little ball, una bolita de cera, a little ball of wax. Oh. But it was like, you know, it was little, but it was, it was big. <laughs> big enough to block his hearing, obviously. Yeah. Entonces, sí, plantain. <laughs> wow, increíble. Cuando yo era niña, yo tuve much, muchas infecciones de la uh, oreja. Y, y yo, yo prefería esto, la, la, el aceite. Sí. No, no, que, que no, no duele. Uh -huh. Porque yo, yo me recuerdo que necesitaba unas gotas de una medicina, no sé, pero uh, dolía mucho. Ouch. Mm -hmm. So I, when I was a kid, I got a lot of ear infections and I had to take these drops um, medicine of some kind of medicine and it was always cold and it would just like hurt. And I could just imagine that this, this um, plantain oil that you're talking about was no problem to give to your son. I bet you're, you either did it yourself or he'd be like, no, I want to do it. And the, mm -hmm. they get to do it themselves too. Yeah. And it's, it doesn't feel like anything. No se siente como nada. <laughs> Excelente. And, and then afterwards he could hear you just fine. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, so the ears, um, you know, what's interesting on a note about ears and language there is in, in English, we have the inner ear and outer ear, but there's actually different words in Spanish for inner ear and outer ear. And I have to remember which, which one is it? Yeah. Inner so oreja is ear, um, and oído is the inner ear. That's right. A good way to remember is, uh, oír or to hear is yeah. yeah i guess that's maybe not the best way to remember but yeah <laughs> oír <laughs> um is to hear but yeah escuchar is like to listen yes you know i remember them in portuguese but it doesn't always translate literally um mm -hmm. but maybe uh no olvidar el, el oído mm. olvidar don't forget it's Oído. Oído. <laughs> Pero it's interesting porque the other way around, 
al revés, um, like, entonces, uh, in English, uh, toes is yeah. the, the fingers of your foot. Right. Pero en español, yo no conozco una palabra para toes, entonces es dedo, dedos del pie, <laughs> like fingers of the feet. <laughs> That is so funny. It is uh, like first time hearing that. So they're all they're all fingers or toes. So in English we have fingers and we have toes, but they're the same word in in various languages. That that is really funny. Yeah. <laughs> so you actually had a kind of a two in one story. So historia era dos dos remedios en una historia. Es una cosa es infección, es dolor y tan otras y un objeto que estaba en el oído, oír, sí. oído, ajá, ajá. And so you had like three in one story. There you had there was an uh, infection, there was pain, and there was an object in the ear, so it would could pull it out. Mm -hmm. Get extra points for that one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plantain is amazing. It is. Uh, Have you yeah. used it? Lee says it's great for teething. Para los bebés, cuando, ¿cómo se dice cuando they're teething? Eh, sí, cuando están saliendo los dientes. Sí, ¿has usado plantain por esto? Sí, sí, el, el aceite um, es lo más fácil. It's the easiest, of course, because it's a baby. Mm -hmm. um, entonces, aceite de plantago y en las encías. Y ayuda con el dolor. Eh, mi hija, que recientemente le estaban saliendo... She, my, my daughter was teeth, uh, she was teething recently. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it was incredible because just dabbing it, um, she was, she'd been crying the whole day, the whole day. And we put some plantain oil on it when within five minutes, she was calm. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. <laughs> and that's good for everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That helps. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> uh, she speaks cat only. Um, well, perfect. That was as a story that Lise gives in a number of her talks about teething, um, sinus infections. Uh, is también sinusite in español? Allergias. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, otitis. Your your problems. Um, just generally, even just like mucusy, have you used it also? Because like babies, they have such tiny nostrils. Uh, have you used it like when they're all congested? Mm -hmm. uh, see, sí. I've used it uh, with congestion for sure, like uh, the oil usually or here and on the nose. Um, pero para bebés, for babies, what I find the most useful when they have a cold is, uh, is a bath. Um, because babies have very thin skin, very permeable skin. So the, the herbs are, can really get in, um, but it's more gentle than ingesting them, um, directly. Um, entonces los bebés tienen piel muy delgada, muy, eh, eh, permeable. Entonces es un baño es muy buena idea para, 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 uso medicinal para los bebés and yeah in the in the bath i usually put plantain for sure um and then other plants um like yarrow um uh which is um achillea milfolium um uh, or milenrama in spanish uh, like colloquial uh, meaning mil and rama rama is like the stock meal means thousand, so thousand leaved. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I put uh, alcampain um, and I put uh, usually elderflower. Um, and I make a big bath, like five liters. And then, um, and then I strain it and then I put that hot bath in the, the bath water. Entonces hago una olla grande de 5 litros de, con esas plantas y después de colarlo, lo echo en el baño. And, um, and of course, you test the temperature to make sure it's not too hot, but you want it to be warm. Um, and then just bathe the baby and that will open the pores 
Um, it will help release uh, mucus. And uh, especially if they have fever as well, it's good because it helps to release the heat. And um, yeah, you'll see amazing results uh, with baths. Um, yeah, that's like the number one thing I do for especially babies. Mm -hmm. Does that help? Because, it, you know, my mind is always like, what is the dose? You know, I mm -hmm. imagine that you use porque también con los bebés siempre piensan cuánto yo doy, cuánto de esto yo doy de ese, este tintura o cual, lo que sea. Mm -hmm. Entonces, eh, por eso los baños o baths son muy eh, fáciles porque um, it's, it's just absorbing through their skin. Solo está, las propiedades son absorbidas por la piel, pero no es... Eh, no es tan invasivo como una tintura o un, o un té eh, y claro, en el baño de pronto toman un poquito pero no están digamos consumiendo, entonces es muy fácil pero por ejemplo para bebés, el otro día que mi hija tenía gripa eh, hizo varios baños uh, my, my daughter had a, a, cold, a flu and after three nights of baths there was improvement, tres noches de, de baños, mejoramiento, hubo mejoramiento, but it was still not, it was still lingering and not, um, not fully going away. Entonces, uh, I made her a tincture, pero uh, diluted. Entonces, uh, take como uh, seis gotas de, de, de tintura en eh, en 125 mililitros de agua. Mm -hmm. Entonces eso lo es uh, uh, three or sorry six drops of tincture in 125 mils of water. Um, that is more than a 250. Uh, that's it, it's a 250 dilution. So you dilute it. You dilute it by more than 250 times. So it's very very minimal and then from that dilution i would use like two drops at a time mm. um, on a teaspoon so it's very yeah it's very minimal like basically no you're you're not really getting any of the alcohol which is the most uh it's the most um difficult for the child to process um entonces Sí, no, no reciben el alcohol que para los niños es muy difícil de procesar. Mm -hmm. Y es muy pequeñita, tiene unos 11 me meses. Sí, 11 meses. Uh, she's very little, she's just 11 months old. So, and of course, all of this, this is not medical advice. We're just sharing experiences and we all wish you well, but definitely check with your primary care provider, your licensed health practitioner for all of this. Um, but these are remedies that have been used for years and years um, by people all around the world. And so this is muy importante que es, esta información no, no es uh, información medical, es eh, solamente información um, por los años, por las uh, abuelas y, y, y las uh, generaciones ¿sí? um, mm -hmm. de, de uso y espero que uh, esperamos que puedan ayudar ustedes también, um, pero uh, es uh, usan con cariño. <laughs> Mm -hmm. always always use them with much care and um, get to know an herbalist in your area take some classes online um, this is just to get you started in in um, learning what's around you mm -hmm. if you're new to herbalism and herbs the best way to learn is to try them on yourself that's the number one place mm -hmm. <laughs> el mejor lugar para aprender es con uno mismo para para las hierbas y cualquier otra cosa <laughs> Yo, yo, yo concordo. And I just noticed my name is still host. I forgot to change that. <laughs> uh, we could go on for hours about this one herb. Uh, esta única hierba puede discutir por días, no solamente horas. Pero antes de ir, yo puedo, quiero preguntar si tienes unas otras historias, unas otras dicas muy importantes que any other tips or stories that you find are really important that you want to share 
before we um, before we say goodbye for today. Um, sí, una interesante que uh, se mencionó antes el plantar fasciitis mm -hmm. um, o fascitis plantar uh, was uh, Liz Wolf del Instituto de Matthew Wood um, la ha usado para para plantar fasciitis. Entonces uh, si tienes plantar fasciitis en la noche, pones una hoja de, de llantén, de plantago, en cada pie, en, en la planta, en the sole of the foot. You put a leaf of plantain in each foot uh, under the sock. Then you go to bed. Te vas a dormir y ayuda con el dolor. Mm -hmm. Y es casi la única cosa, la, no, la misma cosa que uh, uh, aconteció. 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 Um, no, pasó. Um, en portugués es acontecer. Ah. Pero yo creo que es pasar en, ajá, ajá. en español. Lo que pasó con mi tío es que machucó o oh, no sé cómo, lo que pasó con su pie, pero uh, fuimos a la casa de mi tío y tía. So we went to my aunt and uncle's house to visit them and something happened to his, his foot. I, for, I don't even remember what happened. Pero... Um, We recommended, um, ¿qué es recommend? Eh, recomendar. Recomendar, claro, tan fácil, las palabras tan fácil, yo me olvido. <laughs> uh, pero um, recomendó uh, poner uh, plantago así, simplemente así, y después de unos mm, tres, cuatro días ya era mejor, ya mm. estaba mejor. And so there's just such simple things, you know, like putting the leaf in your in your foot, and you might even have like um, you might have stepped on something, and it helps. I mean, at least has amazing stories. Um, I'll show you here while I'm I'm talking at the Matthew Wood Institute of Herbalism. Well, first of all, we have a few videos on the Matthew Wood um, Institute of Herbalism YouTube page. Um, here's one. I'll put these in the show notes. Entonces tenemos varios muchos videos. Um, de, de nuestros herbalistas del um, Instituto Matthew Wood y en YouTube y también en la propia uh, instituto, instituto aquí. So we have videos on YouTube at the Matthew Institute of Herbalism and at um, the Institute proper. And what was I talking about? Oh, Lisa's stories, sus historias de, de Lisa Wolf um, dijo, que tiene varias historias. Um, these are all in English. So um, just a heads up. Um, todas las clases todavía están en inglés. Um, pero un día, maybe one day, we will have them in Spanish as well. Van a estar en, en español también. Uh, pero Liz Wolf tiene tantas historias. Plant herbs. There we go. Wax. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to do too many things at once. Uh, I'll leave a link also for this free preview. Um, it is in English and uh, she does have some great stories. And I think it's the spring section right here. We have plantain. But one of her stories, una de sus historias, una de, de las maestras, uh, Lise Wolf, del Instituto, Instituto Matthew Wood. Yo voy a hablar un poquito, poquito más despacio para mí misma. Uh, es uh, ella, su curso de plant walks es uh, de cada estación, pero no solamente primavera, verano, uh, otoño, es, es, son las épocas entre los, las esta, estaciones también. Y tiene tantas, más tantas historias. Y una de las historias que dijo que un, one of her stories, uh, Lise has tons of stories in her plant walks, and I'm going to stop paging through this so I can pay attention to what I'm talking about. It's a little more challenging in two, two languages. Language. <laughs> but it's worth it. <laughs> uh, it's full of stories. It's so much fun. And like I was saying, it's only in English at this point, but um, well worth it. And one of the stories that she told is she had a friend and Um, you know how sometimes friends you just respond quickly to, you know, in a text or something like that. Entonces, Liz uh, tuvo una, una amiga que estaba mandando un mensaje por el teléfono. Es mensaje o texto. Ajá, uh -huh. mensaje. Mensaje. 
y como a veces cuando está discutiendo por texto o por mensaje con sus amigas, es muy corto, sí, es muy, muy rápido. And so her friend was like, I have, I have something in my nose and I need help getting it out. You know, something simple, simple like that. Yo tengo algo en mi nariz y, no, y necesito ayuda para uh, quitarlo. Y, and so she's like, oh, just put plantain on, on, on your nose. Entonces solamente tienes que poner plantain. Es un, she uses oil usually to un aceite. Uh, but what her friend didn't say is that it was like a splinter. ¿Cómo se dice splinter again? Astilla. Astilla, gracias. Um, era un, un tipo astilla, algo, oh no, era un um, uh, pequeñito um, pelito oh. en el nariz. Y, y su amiga, so it was a teeny tiny hair, a nose hair. And so her friend was like, oh, okay, I put the, the oil on my nose. And so she put it on the outside. Entonces eh, su amiga, la amiga de Liz, no dijo que era un, un pe es pelito, ¿sí? Ajá. Pero porque yo imagino un perrito. <risa> pero un perrito, pero uh, puso el aceite, um, how, what would you say on the outside? Afuera. Afuera de la nariz, en vez de por dentro, ¿sí? Entonces lo que pasó, so what happens is she put the oil on the outside, the little hair came through the nose, and then, uh, nostril to the outside. Entonces lo que pasó es que el pe pelito pasó por el nariz al, 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 wow. por fuera, por fuera. And, mm -hmm. and so uh, just a little detail, you know, you want to put it on the side where you want it to come out because it will amazingly pull something all the way through. Entonces notas que tienes que poner el aceite o cualquier forma que estás usando plantain, pones en el lado que quieres que salgas. ¿Sí? Sí. ¿Está uh -huh. cierto? Ok, bueno. <laughs> so that's an amazing, I mean, The, her classes are full of amazing stories like that. Yeah, amazing. Plus, she, I think she does over 100 plants, 100 different plants yeah. um, in the plant walks. So, yeah, there's, aside from plantain, <laughs> those is muchas plantas. <laughs> plantas. So there are many stories. Uh, my husband right now is has uh, herbalist recommended that he take plantain tea to help um, heal a hole in his large intest intestine. Uh, and so that's been going well, um, as far as we can tell. Um, he's ha had a bout with diverticulitis. Entonces mi marido tuvo un, un caso, caso de diverticulitis, mm -hmm. imagino. Entonces tiene un, um, no es, what would be a hole? A hueco. Hueco, gracias. Oh, Pequeño, pequeño, no es muy grande, pero no, no necesito un, un hueco muy grande para causar problemas, ¿sí? Mm -hmm. Entonces, uno de, de las hierbolistas del um, Instituto Matthew Wood uh, recomendó uh, un cha de plantain mm -hmm. para ayudar a uh, los lados del hueco, um, como ibas a uh, explicar, es, um, eh, cerrarse o pegarse. Sí, cerrar o pegar probable, probablemente es un, un, una palabra muy buena por, por esto. Porque como la palabra sacar o tirar es una energía, ¿sí? Uh -huh. Entonces, para placar, dijo placar. Eh, pegar. Pegar, sí. Uh, es, es una energía similar. And so that's another use. So my, I think I said that all in Spanish. Um, my husband has had, had a bout with uh, diverticulitis, has a little hole in his large intestine. And so the, the, that's not a great thing to have a little hole, even a little hole in your large intestine. So one of the herbalists that we work with at the Matthew Wood Institute of Herbalism recommended just taking a plantain tea. And it seems like that and many other things have been helping to um, bring those the sides of that hole together and and to in our in our observation heal that as well so there's um again test it on yourselves we this is not medical advice but there are some pretty amazing things that we have seen and heard plantain do mm -hmm. and it sounds it sounds uh 
it sounds magical to be honest when you're like oh yeah a, a leaf can pull out a, a splinter but try it it'll you'll see it's uh it you know you you'll have a splinter in there for for days and you'll pick at it with tweezers and you know you won't be able to get it out you put some plantain on it and it'll come right out <laughs> it's incredible it's absolutely incredible so um i think that those were the main stories that i wanted to share um and I'm so grateful that you had those stories about your little ones to share. I know that's so helpful to so many. Like I said before, I don't wish that you have the occurrences, you know, uh, that that you for those stories to happen. Pero muchas gracias por las historias con sus bebés. Y, um, and thank you all of you for being here. Absolutely put your comments, questions. Uh, we love hearing from you in, in the comment section, especially what the heck is plantain called in your area? We'd yeah. love to hear from you. Sí, gracias a todos por estar acá. Y pues hasta la próxima. Nos, nos veremos acá otra vez. Sí, see you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye. Right, Bye. -bye. Bye.